on February 1st of 2011, a manga by the name of Detective Trap was serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump. In its early chapters, it captured an audience that wasn't really found in Jump, an audience that wanted more than just battle manga, it wanted mystery and intrigue. But as time went on, its rankings against the rest of its competitors inside Weekly Shonen Jump began to falter. Due to the time constraints and stress of working on a weekly series, the illustrator of Trap was sent to hospital after one of his assistants found him unconscious. A brief hiatus to ensure the health of the illustrator took place, and eventually Trap came back and was reinstated on October 3rd. However, competition did not stop, and its first chapter after coming back was not enough to keep back the looming threat of cancellation. In reality, Trap was failing so early in its run that even after a major story arc, it was beginning to look like it wasn't going to survive just after its 20th chapter. And unfortunately, on December 16th of 2011, Weekly Shonen Jump ordered its cancellation. If you've never heard of Detective Trap, there's a very good reason for that. And it's because it doesn't exist. It's a manga series inside a manga series. The manga series that portrays it is called Bakuman, and it's a series about two boys whose dream it is to become mangaka. It showcases the reality of what it is to try and make a series inside a manga magazine, especially one as competitive and as big as Weekly Shonen Jump. What's great about it is it's not a series built on speculation. It's a series built on reality. It's a series built on experience because the duo behind Bakuman are the same masterminds behind Death Note. While this incident is a fictional example, it imitates reality almost to a T. So that's what I wanna show you today. I want to dispel how Shonen Jump greenlights and acts their series, how they quantify a success in their eyes, and why it seems like they cancel their manga so early. Why it's not realistic to assume a series is going to be a success before it's even dropped or even before it's reached the 20 chapter mark. So join me, we sit down, and I'm going to discuss why your favorite manga don't last. When talking about cancel manga, there is a real sadness behind it, right? Because getting serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump or any magazine means that someone saw value in the story and that there was potential for it to grow. But we have to look at the reality of how series get greenlit and eventually how they get canceled. One of my sources will of course be Bakuman throughout this entire video. So take with what I say with a grain of salt as things will have changed a bit since 2011. But based on the numbers, it doesn't seem like anything has changed. So let's say you decide to create a manga. You make a one shot. And in today's digital age, you have many, many different ways of submitting the manga to get some eyes on it. You can upload it to one of the various websites. You can even still publish it in online competitions, online magazines, or do it the old fashioned way and go straight to Shueisha and ask at Weekly Shonen Jump to submit a one-shot to one of their various competitions that they still hold. Depending on the response to your work, either online or in a competition or magazine, an editor may approach you and offer to showcase your work to the next serialization meeting at the godfather of manga publishing, Weekly Shonen Jump. In these meetings, the editor-in-chief of Jump, as well as captains of editor groups, will all vote on the different series that have been submitted for green light in Jump. While voting, they take into account who made it, how long they've been making manga for, whether or not it worked as a one-shot, how many people read it, how many people voted for it, etc. Then the editors all together vote yay or nay and they put each series into a pile. If they put too many series into the yay pile, they may need to narrow it down, either by getting rid of some entirely or telling them to resubmit it at the next meeting. Essentially, at the end of the meeting, four outcomes will befall your series. Number one, it gets serialized and is greenlit. Number two, you're asked to revise it and resubmit it at the next serialization meeting to then get greenlit. Number three, it gets tested as a one shot in the next issue of Weekly Shonen Jump to see if it will work in the magazine. Number four, it gets axed and they ask you to resubmit something completely different next time. 
Now, you don't have to have had a one-shot in jump to make it, but it does help the resume, and it has worked for some of the biggest titles in jump. It happened with One Piece. Originally, One Piece's one-shot was called Romance Dawn. Mind you, all of this is just within Weekly Shonen Jump and how they run things. Regardless of how you got here, congratulations. You have now been greenlit in one of the greatest manga magazines in the entire world. You are part of a magazine that created such works like Slam Dunk and Dragon Ball, Fists of the North Star. You have made it. But now that you're here, this leaderboard will now dictate your success, your failures, and your livelihood within this magazine for as long as you're here. This is how Shonen Jump decide what series they want to keep and what series they want to throw away. Essentially what happens is after every single weekly Shonen Jump magazine issue is published with the latest chapters from their series, on the back of the magazines is a reader survey. On these reader surveys, they ask how old you are, what gender you are, and also which three series this week were your favorite. They take all those numbers and rank them in relation to each other, thus creating the leaderboard. Now, you may be a bit confused. What about sales? What about the volumes? Well, think about it. People are gonna buy the Weekly Shonen Jump magazines because there are series in there they already love. They're gonna buy it for their JJKs, their One Piece, and Sakamoto. And they're not gonna buy it for a new series unless it's popping off. And they're not gonna print volumes and volumes upon volumes of these new series that no one is reading. That's why the surveys matter much more than overall sales. Now, they follow the surveys to a T for various reasons. Number one, it helps the magazine retain the audience and demographic it is already cultivated, but it also helps them find series that then cater towards a demographic they may not have yet. Let's say a romance series is capturing older females and maybe a darker series is capturing older males. Number two, it incentivizes the manga cut to create the best versions of their stories possible, take greater risks risks, find new ambitious ways to tell their stories, find cool, funny, exciting ways to capture their readers every single week. Number three, it provides the magazine with solid proof of what series they have to get rid of and what series they can keep. Now, this system isn't perfect, of course. Mangaka can feel like they need to conform their stories sometimes to fit a certain trend that is working in Weekly Shonen Jump, thus kind of devaluing the quality of what made their story already good in the first place. It also forces the mangaka to create stories that are exciting from chapter one and not try something different and risky. Now that we know how a series is greenlit, how do we know when it gets axed? Now, this can vary because there are usually around 20 series in Jump at any given time. Essentially, if your rankings are as low as 20 for quite a few consecutive weeks, you are not going to last. But that being said, there are some series that you and I would quantify as some of the biggest successes in Weekly Jump that have been as low as 20 and have been as high as number one consecutively throughout the years. To show you, we got to put on some stonks and I'll visually show you how these rankings can work. So let's take a look at Zhajian Ken. This is a website that takes all the data of the series that are currently going in Weekly Shonen Jump and shows you their rankings from every single chapter as far back as 1968. This is all data that's been found in multiple different ways. Some of it has been found in Japan's Agency of Cultural Affairs. Some data has also been supplemented from online research, purchasing physical shonen magazines. Now this graph here isn't too important, but it shows you the top series and jump and their averages. You have your, of course, One Piece, JJK, Sakamoto, and some others that you'd be surprised to learn are actually the top series in jump right now, even if you haven't heard of them. Every issue has its own individual leaderboard, which tells you what ranked that week. And then you have the average leaderboard. As you can see, One Piece never, ever, ever goes below third place. And it's been like that for quite some time, even when it has a hiatus. But let me show you how easy it is for a series to just go very high and then drop very quickly. Let's look at the first 10 chapters of two series, which I won't tell you the names of. Which of these two series looks healthier to you? It may be hard to tell because they're the first 10 chapters of a series and you don't know the series. You don't know what it looks like. You don't know the name of it. You don't know the characters. So quite literally, it's a guessing game. But let me show you the names of them and their lifetime in the magazine. And as you can see, Naruto and Bleach are very well-known series and have had very differing numbers over the years. 
It just shows that there are some series you can't tell are going to be the big mainstream successes. Let's see a new series that people are talking about and see if it's doing very well. Let's look at Kagurabachi. And at the time of this recording, only two chapters have been released. So there isn't a lot to go on, but let's take a look anyway. In its first chapter, it reached first place. Now, don't get excited. Every chapter, whenever it releases in Weekly Shonen Jump, regardless of whether or not it has a lot of hype, or no hype at all, will always reach first place because of various reasons. Number one, it's going to be on the front cover of the magazine that week. Number two, it's going to have color in the first pages. And it is also going to be the very first series as soon as you open the magazine. Look at the other series that have just released in Shonen Jump this week. You have Two on Ice. That got number one its first week. Mama Yu Yu got number one its first week. So you have to look at the chapters past number one. Regardless of its first chapter, Kagurabachi is in sixth place, which isn't terrible. It can go up or down. I'm sure editing version of me will show you where it's at at the time I'm editing this. You may be thinking that I'm making this up, but it's true. Even Bakuman has my back. If we look at the first chapter of every series that has come out the past year, pretty much all of them in first place and even old series, every single one starts in first place at the very first chapter. Like I said, it's a changing leaderboard and it is constantly moving. The only thing that doesn't move is One Piece. It will never go below three. <laughs> Dodon Dododon was one of these series that many people in the West believed to be one of the next big shonen. And it followed a similar trend of fighting demon and yokai and evil spirits. So let's look at how it fared. A dip and then some stability around ninth place, that's fine. If you're remaining in the top 10, you're definitely gonna be around for as long as you want if you stay in there. But if we look further, it just plummeted and it never came back. You might be thinking, okay, these are newbies. These are people who have no experience in Weekly Shonen Jump. These are people who don't know how the rankings work. They don't know how to make manga. This is their first gig. Okay, fair. Let's look at people who made their second series after coming back to Weekly Shonen Jump. Let's look at the manga duo who made Food Wars, which ran in Weekly Shonen Jump from 2012 to 2019. This is a duo that has experience, right? Their career was made in Jump, so they must have some insider knowledge, and their newest series, Tenmaku Cinema, must have done pretty well, right? Me personally, I like this series. I'm a filmmaking buff, and to see a manga about filmmaking was really exciting. Cool concept, strong character, all right, let's see how it did, right? Nope. Cancelled. Too low on the rankings. And of course, let's look at one of the most infamous examples, Ayashimon. The creator of Hell's Paradise came from Jump Plus to Weekly Shonen Jump. Let's see how he did. Just didn't work. Jump doesn't give a shit if you are a creator that has created something great in Jump. Even if you're a veteran, you don't get special treatment. The only special treatment you could get is if you were one of the people who made some of the fucking biggest series in Jump. Like, look at Dragon Ball Super and Boruto. Boruto was a series that was in Weekly Shonen Jump, but look at the amount of hiatus. So it got moved to be a monthly series. And it was only afforded that courtesy because guess what? It was one of the big three. If it was just any old schmuck series, it would have been axed by now. Jump does not care. It wants consistent quality. And that is one of the things that the rankings do. This can be very detrimental to the mental health of people who work in Jump. As someone who makes content and I get personally ranked on every single video I make against myself, yeah, doesn't feel very good. And yes, me and Oda are basically the same. That is what I'm saying, yes. So now we know how Cutthroat Jump is, why do people make these grand observations that this will be the next big series in Jump, or that this will be the next New Blood in Jump, or that this is going to be the next huge story that might eclipse One Piece? Well, first of all, I think people don't actually know about the rankings, so that's the first reason. Second of all, no one knows what in Jump is going to become the next big thing. You look at the numbers, you look at these graphs, it's like the stock market. And like Matthew McConaughey says, the market can go up, down, or in circles. Nobody knows, least of all, us, the readers. Editors in Weekly Shonen Jump don't really know. 
They have an idea of what will work in Jump and what will suit it, but they can't guarantee what's going to be a smash success. Otherwise, Weekly Shonen Jump would just be full of bangers and nothing would get cancelled. If you compare Margaritas to anime watches, you know, there's a lot of differences. One of the differences is that Margaritas do have this air about being ahead on something. Not just being ahead on a series that people are watching and saying, hey, I know what happens in the next arc, but also being ahead on the next big thing. Trying to guess what's going to be the next big series can give you this arbitrary badge of, yes, I'm the one who guessed that this was going to be big, and I'm the one who's been reading it before it got popular. It's basically just being good at guess who. And that's really it. No one here, you, me, anyone knows what will be big and jump, even if it looks like it's going to fit jump to a T. In Bakuman, Marashi, the main character, had an uncle who was a mangaka, and he didn't describe being a mangaka as an artist or as someone who is trying to create the best story he can. He described being a mangaka as being a professional gambler because you never know if your chapter is going to do as well as you think it is. And if you're someone who thinks they know what's going to work in Japan because you're looking at the trends of what is popular in Japan right now, what's popular in Jump, that doesn't have any kind of weight. Because if you look at what's in Jump and look at the most popular, it doesn't seem to add up. Blue Box and Akane Yabashi at the time of this recording are some of the top series in Weekly Shonen Jump right now. And they are a series about romance and a girl who tells old Japanese Edo series to people. I don't think they really hold up in this comparison of what's trending. And that's because Jump, while it has certain things that do work like battle manga and what is popular, they also have variety. If you had told the editors of Shonen Jump back in the day that Death Note was going to be a cult hit, they probably would have laughed you out of the room. And that is because trends come and go. If a series comes in and tries to appeal to a certain trend, it could easily as die or live based on how saturated it is. If it was that easy, everyone would do it. Everyone would make dark demon revenge stories for every single magazine, but it's not. Now, I'm not saying this to say that a series is going to succeed or not. What I am trying to say is that there is no possible way of you or I knowing. But I will say to be wary of anyone online, especially content creators, touting that a series is going to be big or how huge it's going to be based on research they've done. As someone who is a part-time YouTuber and used to make videos on one series, I know how much they value a series to succeed. When you make videos on just one manga series, you are guaranteeing yourself views, especially if it's new and people are talking about it. When I was only making videos on Berserk, that's all that got views. So it's within the best interests of these other YouTubers to make videos on a series that is trending. And if it succeeds and continues to grow and become a big series, they then are going to benefit from it. Hundreds of manga channels out there that make a living covering one or multiple series, making videos about every single chapter as a release, crafting what's going to happen next. Some of these channels are really good, but some channels are just trying to chase and establish themselves as the authority on new series. So it's within their best interest to tell you that this series is going to be the next big thing because no one wants to be a part of a sinking ship. No one wants to root for a dying horse. No one wants to read something that's going to get cancelled. This is all essentially just unparalleled speculation, a massive expectations because of some really fucking funny memes, and a little bit of hope. These waves of excitements that could be right, but they could be just as wrong. Ultimately, I want every series to succeed. I know as someone who creates something to want to succeed. Ultimately, is this a plus for the mangaka to see that there's so much hype towards their series? I'm not sure. Again, we don't really have a say. We're not there. We're not reading the surveys. We're not putting them in. We're not really there where manga is taking place. Ultimately, I don't know if anything will change or can change in Jump. I mean, again, they've been doing these rankings for decades and it has created some of the best manga ever known. But ultimately, there is a positive to kind of all of this, especially with rankings and trying to create the best story possible. In Bakuman, the rankings can really dictate the days of our main characters. They can be the worst days when they have a low ranking and some of the best days when they have a high one. And there's this thing that's amazing with these rankings that actually happens in the series is where they get to know every single creator of every single manga that's in Jump. 
and they push each other to make better stories. They create this competition where they inspire each other to make something great. And that's something that can be good with competition. It can fuel you. For me, there are many creators in my niche and outside of my niche that I look at and I hope one day I can get to that quality of videos. So it can be something great and I'm still trying. But I never want to go out there and say that I'm going to be the next big YouTuber or that this series is going to change your life because I don't know that. All I know is that I need to look at every single video as its own story and try and make the best one I can. And I think that's what we should be doing when we look at these manga. Look at them as what they are or why they're going to change the world or should they, but just trying to appreciate every story like it is and, you know, make some memes along the way. It's hard not to be romantic about manga, especially because it's crazy to see a small series grow into one of the biggest things in the world. And it is sad to see one that had so much potential that you loved just get axed for reasons you have no control over. But it's comforting to know that every single series and every single story and every single piece all begin at number one. Thanks all for watching. This has been a very hard video to film and research and numbers and stuff, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave a link for the description of the website down below so you can use it to look and see if Series and Weekly Shonen Jump are doing well. But on that, if you liked the video, please like it. I always appreciate it. And subscribing also does help the algorithm and helps this channel grow. I really appreciate that. But that's all from me. It's really hot in this room, so I'm going to go now. My name's Mugen. As always, have a good one.